You know what I love about darts? I I'm going to tell you what it is. It's an easy game. You can play it sober. Sometimes you could be even more effective when you're drunk. You don't need nearly the amount of room that you do to bowl, which fits into many of those same categories. And you can play darts just about anywhere. I love it. And best of all, best of all, when you're done playing and you get that deep kind of waxy itch, I'm gonna tell you this much, a little secret. A dart works wonders as an emergency Q-tip. Oh. oh. Now that's what I'm talking about. That's right. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. You gotta try it out. Oh, wait, 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 what? We're live? Right now? Like, like, like the people just heard this whole conversation? God damn it! We're professionals here! Unbelievable! I'm an award-winning YWC journalist and do you see the type of Bush League BS, the Schleg Daddy's got to put up with. Unacceptable. I'll talk to you after the show. Anyways, welcome everyone to another edition of the Off the Rope Show here on OTRS Central. I hope you enjoyed the first episode. If you didn't, then shame on you. After you get done watching this episode, episode two, go back and watch episode one. It'll be worth your while. It's myself talking about YouTube blacklisting professional wrestling and what that really means. Today's episode might as well be entitled Two Angry Old White Wrestling Guys, One from the North, One from the South, who all these years later still hate each other for whatever reason and are more relevant than they should be at this point in time, but not nearly as relevant as they've ever thought themselves to be. That, unfortunately, does not make for an effective, efficient, attention-grabbing YouTube title so I gotta go with Jim Cornette and Vince Russo. But anyways, on with the show. I'm gonna see you after the show. We all know that major professional wrestling is in a bit of a down period right now. I mean, maybe some of you like the indies, but that's not major leagues. That's, you know, the independent circuit. We're talking about major league professional wrestling. It, it's in a down period. And we know it's been better. We hope that it can get better, but in the meantime, we're kind of in this awkward place. We're trying to figure out what to do to buy the time and hope that it gets better with that deep down fear that is probably not going to. And as a result, we're getting to a place where boredom is really making us grow numb to professional wrestling. And that's not a good place we want to be, especially in 2017, as all of you are joining with me to do our best to hashtag make wrestling fun again. We're going to do it. We're going to do it. Along with me, who's going to do it? You, you, you! All of us! We're going to make wrestling fun again. But in the meantime, we got to figure out how to pass the time, how to keep ourselves occupied, how to keep ourselves at least somewhat engaged in professional wrestling. We need distractions and positive ones at that. So where do we go? For some of us, it's going to be wrestling from the past. And regardless of your taste or flavor in professional wrestling, there's something out there for you in wrestling history. So it's an easy place to go. That's where some of you go. For a few of you, it might be sex. I can have sex with a woman with your penis. <laughs> and no, your vag flashlight does not count. Flashlight, whatever the fuck. You get the point. It's not like I have one of those things. It's not mine. I don't care what the receipt says. Damn it. Sex. For a few of you, the escape might be porn. Um, for quite a few of you, the escape might be porn. For the majority of you, the escape might be porn. Yeah, frankly, honestly, for all of us, the escape is porn. Because let's be real. Why was the internet created? It was created for four things. Four things. Porn, anywhere and everywhere you could possibly imagine. Videos of puppies. Videos of kittens. And for wild, crazy conspiracy theories to be cultivated. Those are the four things. And notice number one is porn. Sorry, puppies, kitties, and crazy reptilian conspiracy theories. You can all kick rocks because it's all about porn, baby. And Jada, and Jada Fire. The Schleg Daddy still loves you, baby, even though you're advancing in the years and not quite as active as you once were. But in the meantime, oh, the ladies like Anna Fox and Misty Stone, oh my goodness, I know they love the white dicks. Believe me, as a white man, who is a connoisseur of black women. I know 
I can't even describe it, but it's a feeling, it's a sixth sense. I know, believe me, I know, and I know they do. And I also know that they love black chicks. And that's what I love in a woman. A woman that loves white dicks. And when they get bored, they go for some black chicks. Sweet Jesus, hallelujah, life should be so simple. And for those of you wondering, keep hope alive. Someday, someday, you may just get a list of my top 10 black lesbian porn stars. It could happen. And I guarantee you, those three names that I just mentioned will be very, very high on the list. But anyways, moving on. We're trying to look for things to keep us positive because as human beings, we gravitate towards and feed off of negativity. It's easier to be negative than it is positive, and we all know that to be true. It, it absolutely is. Uh, it, it's kind of like how we'd rather watch a fight than stop it. Oh, you mean this person was doing absolutely nothing wrong is getting jumped by eight to ten fuck sticks instead of the 60 of us jumping in and yoking these ten bums up. We're going to sit there and hoot and holler, watch in that mom mentality, and we got to make sure we get our fucking phones out because we got to do it for the vine, baby. And oh, if we're so lucky, we're going to become world star hip hop famous bitches. But it's true. Train wrecks equal ratings. We'd rather watch bad shit go down than stop it. It's that simple. And if you don't believe me that train wrecks equal ratings, train wrecks equal attention, train wrecks are what we gravitate towards, look at the Trump presidency. It is what it is, be honest. The Kardashian family, you want to talk about train wrecks, there you go right there. Going back into the 90s, Bill Clinton and Zippergate and his inability to control his penis and cigars in the White House. We always gravitate towards that shit. We feed off of that shit. The O.J. Simpson trial, the L.A. riots, so on and so forth. It's who we are. We feed off of that shit. And it's kind of funny because in that way we create our own monsters in the wrestling world, and in particular the internet wrestling world. And two monsters that kind of live in this space to me are Jim Cornette and Vince Russo. Because when it comes to drama, and frankly being negative and angry, Jim Cornette owns that life. And when it comes to train wrecks, being a part of train wrecks, facilitating train wrecks, owning the concept of train wrecks, and ev invoking the type of negativity that is almost unheard of out of the professional wrestling community, Vince Russo is all about that thug life. Believe that player. And what's striking to me with these two fucks it's 2017, and we're still talking about these two. Frankly, two guys that really, truly haven't been relevant in at least 15, if not 20 damn years. And how ironic. Talking about living in the past is what we do in professional wrestling. These two dudes are the perfect epitome of it. We can't live in the present or, God forbid, the future because we can't, can't get past shit that happened in the 90s and the 2000s. Jesus Christ, after almost 20 years, these two guys are still beefing. It's like these are two guys that went to, got, went to high school together, and they both had a girl they were interested in. One got with her first, then the other one stole her away, and they're still angry about it at the 30, 35, 40-year high school reunion, and neither one of them ended up marrying the bitch or knocking her up. The fuck are you still angry about? Or it's like these two old guys in the neighborhood trying to do shit to fuck with each other because they're arguing over a foot and a half or two foot worth of a property line. Like, who cares? What are you going to do with two feet? It's the principle, damn it! I'm going to throw flaming bags of beagle shit over there. I will teach him. Oh my God, he cuts his grass too low. He doesn't cut his grass low enough. You know how we're going to settle this? Like real Americans, we're going to the HOA, bitches. That's the kind of shit we're talking about here. And you as wrestling fans, you're just kind of left wondering what the hell to make out of all of this. And that's what I'm here to do today, is to help you make sense of this and figure out what these guys are talking about, why they're beefing, and what the hell, if anything, it should really mean to you or, frankly, to them. And we're going to start talking about it after this short commercial message. So, oh, hello, everyone. My name is Jeff Schlegel, and you may know me uh, as my persona, the Schleg Daddy, here on OTRS Central on YouTube.com. And I want to say thank you to all of you that have been on me for this journey for the past 
six and a half years now. It's, it's been a lot of fun. It's been one of the true highlights of my life. So many good things have come out of making videos here on YouTube, believe it or not. And I appreciate all of you that have been on that journey and all of you that maybe are just starting on your journey with this channel. And I hope you continue to do so. And I hope you help others to see the light. What I'm asking you to do is take the time, if you enjoy this content, if you enjoy this video, if you enjoy the return of the Off The Rope Show, to like this video. And if you're so inclined, maybe comment on the video too. And you know, if we want to get nuts, why don't we go ahead and share the video on social media? The Facebooks, the Twitters, the whatever the hell else is of the world. Let the world know the great content and entertainment value you get from the Off The Rope Show and OTRS Central. You know, and, and if you're so inclined, and you haven't done so already, well, shame on you. Why don't you go ahead and follow this channel on Twitter? At OTRS Central is the Twitter handle. It's pretty simple. Go ahead and give it a follow. All the cool kids are. If you want to be a part of the cool kid, click right. Right? Go ahead and like the channel on Facebook. I've got the Facebook page link in the description box below. I'm going to start posting there, too. And, and, and be all up. Above all else, you know you know what Jeff would like you to do? If you haven't done so already, subscribe to this channel. Complete your quest. Subscribe. Help to hashtag make wrestling fun again. Subscribe! Subscribe! Subscribe, damn it! That little button that said subscribe on this channel, click it! Click it good! And then tell other people on social media to click it and click it good! And then tell them to tell other people to click it and click it good. By now we all know who Jim Cornette is. One of the greatest managers in the history of the wrestling business who has a unique perspective on things because he's been able to view the business from multiple different perspectives. From his time as a manager, from his time being involved with creative committees in WWF, and WCW, and TNA, ROH, running his own promotions like Smoky Mountain, and OVW, you know, for a guy who wasn't a worker in the ring, his credentials give him, in theory, a ton of credibility. So when Jim Cornette says something, even if people don't always agree with it, and sometimes they do and sometimes they don't, they tend to listen and they tend to believe him and lean towards him a little bit more because of said credentials. But when I listen to Jim Cornette, more and more, I just hear a guy who talks about how much better everything used to be. Well, he did work for the NWA in Jim Crockett Promotions, and he did manage the Midnight Express, so this man knows professional wrestling. He breaks for the in-ring action like it's everything in the damn world. Well, after all, it is professional wrestling. That's what matters most, the in-ring action. Honestly, to me, he's nothing more than a Kardashian of wrestling. He's a pure, full-fledged attention whore. Even still to this day, craves the spotlight being shined brightly on him. Personally, I love the insight he provides on his shoot videos. He acts like a smart in terms of the fact he believes he has all the answers, and especially looking at his work in ROH, he clearly doesn't. He worked in the business, so automatically he clearly knows what he's talking about. Most certainly a lot better than the Schleg Daddy. Honestly, he's hard to take seriously sometimes because he's so quick to challenge somebody to a fight. It's like he's a fake tough guy who's coming out and trying to bully people because he has these massively deep insecurities coming from somewhere I don't know. Maybe he's trying to compensate for deficiencies with uh, Camp Cornette, if you know what I mean. He most certainly could whoop Kevin Dunn's ass. What's up, Doc? And frankly, could, couldn't anybody? And more importantly, doesn't he deserve it? Hmm? Of course, of course. He could whoop Kevin Dunn's ass. Who couldn't? Just yank on them Bugs Bunny chompers and there you go. But I'm going to tell you this much. Do you realize how often he shits on Kenny Omega and the Young Bucks? And what? Jim Cornette, how dare you? How dare you? I'm going to get even. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to spend no money, and I'm going to come on the internet, and I'm going to complain about it. Because that's what I do, because I'm a professional wrestling fan. Huh?
How dare you say that about the Young Bucks? They are arguably the greatest tag team in the motherfucking world. And Kenny Omega. You don't like Kenny Omega. Look at Kenny Omega and Okada won. One of the greatest professional wrestling matches of all motherfucking time. And then we just had Kenny Omega versus Okada 2, which was even better. If Dave Meltzer gave the first match six stars, this match was so much better because it was fucking awesome, and these guys are awesome, and this is the greatest match of all time until the next match that they have, which will be even greater, and then it'll be the greatest match of all time until the next one they have will be even greater, and so on and so forth. We're going to have to give them a rating that is more appropriate on the star scale. We're going to give them a Milky Way grade for that match. Jim Cornette, we don't find you. I mean, <laughs> that in and of itself should be enough reason for most of you to hate him because he shits on Kenny Omega and the Young Bucks. Oh, there you go. But what frustrates me a lot about Jim Cornette is he's one of those guys that's easy to partake in name calling and not in a way to poke fun at things, satirize things, um, make light of things, sometimes like I do. Um, he does it from a vicious spot and kind of an angry spot and uh, I'm better than you spot. And one of his favorite words to use in particular is Mark and the way that he uses it to kind of degrade and belittle people. And then the way I look at it is honestly, and I have this perspective about a lot, but Cornette in particular, who's the fucking Mark here? Let's look at some of the measurements of what you would say would classify somebody in the wrestling Mark category. He does a podcast about professional wrestling. Oh, Jim Cornette does. And in fact, the guy who he loves to bash on so much, Donald Trump, who's a mark for his name, Jim Cornette, named his podcast after himself. The Jim Cornette Experience, ladies and gentlemen. I don't know about you, but that sounds like some mark shit to me. Does he use the star rating system for professional wrestling matches? Christ! He goes above and beyond that. He's credited for help bringing it to professional wrestling. He's the grandfather, if you will of the star rating system. So crap on Meltzer all you want, but that shit came from the influence of James E. Cornette. I mean, he'll sit there and crap on the star ratings, but he's blaming somebody else for crap that he really started. Kind of like a marriage. Kind of like what your wife does to you all the time. Does he perpetually live in the past? Of course he does. He still longs for the NWA Crockett Territory days. Like, those are the greatest thing ever. Does he hold on to grudges for years and years? Of course he does. Because that's what marks of professional wrestling fucking do. Does he take in-ring action way too damn seriously? Of course he does. Of course he does. But then at the same token, if you go aerial, expect from him a major burial. But he's all about the in-ring action. All about it. Oh, my Christ. Does he love to partake in internet wrestling drama? Hell yeah. He absolutely does. He's been all about it for years, going through all his shoot videos and so on and so forth. It feels like he should be talking less about professional wrestling with like Sean Oliver and some of these other people, Rob Feinstein, you name it. And he should be cutting videos with Wrestling Jesus and Sean's view. That's what it feels like. And I feel like those guys would actually do a better job of wrestling drama, especially the wrestling Jesus, the godfather of YWC drama. We love him. We miss him. We need him. But it feels like that. And, and, and wrestling Jesus, we need you. Help us make wrestling fun again for Christ's sake. But Cornette's all about partaking in wrestling and internet wrestling drama. You see it sometimes when wrestling drama escalates to a certain point. Do people issue challenges to fight and are willing to travel to go somewhere and pay to fight somebody? Yes, does Jim Cornette want to do that? Absolutely. He's willing to pay $5,000 plus travel expenses to go wherever Vince Russo tells him to so he can fight him. So he's not even interested in trying to make money off of something that's been building for 20 plus fucking years. For what payoff? There's a 50% chance you lose, believe it or not. You've come out of pocket five to six grand when you throw in travel expenses and food and sprites. What the fuck? Who does that? I'll tell you who does that. A fucking Mark does that shit. And how pathetic is all of this? A 55, soon to be 56-year-old man wants to get in a fight about professional wrestling, yet fans are the Marks.
give me a break. You're in your mid-50s. What the hell are you fighting about this shit for that happened 20 years ago? Especially over scripted entertainment like professional wrestling. Get a clue, get a life, get laid. And if you can't, watch horn. Jesus Christ. Who wants to fight about shit that happened 20 years ago, 15 years ago, 10 years ago? He's issuing challenges to travel to fight somebody. And instead of making money off of it, he wants to spend money to do it. So I tell you what, I tell you what. I'll make a deal and I'll issue a challenge right here, right now to Jim Cornette. And I'll even save him some money in the process. And we can actually get some type of payoff to this and make things good. You don't have to pay Fins Russo $5,000. You don't have to sit there and pay for your travel to go wherever Vince Russo is. All you have to do is come here to Richmond, Virginia. You let me know the time. You let me know the place. Or even better, I will give you an address and we can meet there. It'll be in public, whatever. You give me $500 because, frankly, the like Daddy wants a little bit of money and wouldn't mind some new equipment for the show. Then you donate $500 to a local animal shelter of my choosing. And what you can do is come straight here to Richmond, Virginia with that $1,000. You can kick me square in the schleggies and call me Russo. You give me $500. You donate $500 to a local animal shelter and do it in Smokey's name. You damn right. You can come here and kick me as hard as you fucking want, split the uprights right in the fucking schleggies, and call me Russo. And if we want to go for the coup de gras, you can buy me lunch at Roos Chris, and you can bitch slap the fuck out of me three to five times and call me Paul Heyman. And you know what? To sweeten the pot for you, Jim, here's what I'll do, mama's boy. After all of this, after you've kicked me square in the sluggies, after you've bitch slapped me and called me Paul Heyman, what I'm going to do is I'm going to agree to give you something. I'll go ahead and I'll shake Dennis Coraluzzo's cold, dead hand where he lays and tell him bygones. And that the NWA still rules, bitches. Will I make you happy? There's a challenge for Jim Cornette. He saves thousands of dollars and still gets to exert physical violence against somebody and everybody can have a good laugh about it. And we've also given $500 to a good cause. If Jim Cornette wants a challenge, well then step right up with the tennis racket, baby. And if you make it $1,000, you can whack me with the tennis racket twice. And Jim Cornette, if you make it $1,500 to the animal shelter in Smokey's name, you can kick me in the schleggies, hit me in the tennis racket over the fucking head, and then you can give me a fucking nuclear wedgie. Atomic wedgie, whatever the fuck, you get the point. You pull them under pants as far as they go, and a little bit more. Now that is entertainment. I think more people would actually rather see that for a variety of reasons than what you're suggesting with Vince Russo. But in all seriousness, and the challenge is real. I'm serious about this. But for Jim Cornette, seriously, he's just a delusional old fuck whose glory days weren't all that. Um, who has this unseemingly unhealthy belief uh, in his rightness. And my honest opinion needs to realize that not everything in life can be run like a Dairy Queen drive through Jesus Christ. Get over it. Get over yourself and move on with the rest of your life, you angry, stupid fuck. And if you don't like what I had to say about it, Jim Cornette, come here to Richmond, Virginia and kick me in the schleggies and let's make something positive happen out of all of this. We'll be right back after this break. Ladies and gentlemen, the Dick Stone's back, baby. And I've got a special message for the one they call the Schleg Daddy, baby. And he knows. He thinks he can run. He thinks he can hide. But the truth is, at the end of the day, he might as well not even try. Because he can't fight. You know why? 
because it's in his blood, like it's heroin, baby. That's what it is. It's like wrestling heroin for him. And no matter how much he try, no matter how much he want to quit, no matter how much he think he quit, at the end of the day, he always going to come back home for that good fix, Daddy. And what I need is your help to make it happen. We need the Schleg Daddy to do three things. Number one, Sunday, July 2nd, he needs to watch Slammiversary. Number two, after he watches Slammiversary, we want him to review Slammiversary. And number three, if the first two don't appeal to you and don't appeal to him, I feel like the third one is going to do it because we need it. And we got to have it for old time's sake, Schleg Daddy. Number three, just one more time, Daddy. We need you to go on ahead and assume Jeff Jarrett's position because that's what's going to help. As you say, hashtag, make wrestling fun again. Well, what do I know? Oh, I know everything. Why? Woo! I'm the dick stone, baby! But, of course, it takes two dipshits to make a bastard, baby. And we've already talked about one dipshit in Jim Cornette. Now we got to talk about the other side of the fence and Vince Russo. And all of us know who Vince Russo is, like him or not. From his time being a major player in the creative processes of WWF, WCW, TNA, multiple times. Uh, this is a guy that's been around the business from a creative aspect for years. Even going back to his days of writing for WWF Magazine. Woo! Only in America can a guy from New York who owned a couple of video stores and cut his friend out of the picture to host Vicious Vincent's World of Wrestling as a radio show for one year in New York can write a letter to Linda McMahon begging for a job to write for the WWF magazine to later on become the lead writer for Raw to then become the lead creative person for WCW and then be able to scam Dixie into that position multiple damn times. Only in America can a Vince Russo happen. How glorious it is. And you got to get say this about Vince, like him or not. One thing that I don't think he gets nearly enough credit for is he is one of the greatest workers in the history of the business, similar to a Dave Meltzer. Russo was never a wrestler. He was never a guy that understood that aspect of it, got that aspect of it, and frankly did a lot of bad, dumb shit over the years. But he was able to convince three different companies to give him the keys to the creative vessel. Three different companies. He sold WWF that he was an answer to the problem, and in some ways he was. He sold WCW on the fact that, hey, I made them this, and this was all me. And then he sold TNA on the fact, ignore what people say about WCW, I know what I'm doing, they're wrong. And even after TNA knew what he was about, they kept bringing him back. Dixie Carter just couldn't quit Vince Russo. Must be something about the beard. <laughs> who knows, who knows. But when you talk about Russo, you know, it's easy to crap on him. It's become something that's kind of the cool thing to do. But I've always kind of resented the way that WWF slash WWE always presented an anti-Russo slant. You know, they always threw out this propaganda that Russo was nothing, he didn't mean anything, and that's just bullshit. I don't care if you want to say at the end of the day Vince McMahon was everything and you had a strong booking committee around Vince Russo, he was still the lead writer for Raw. He was still the lead writer for the pay-per-views. He had influence. And even if he presented a lot of bad ideas, obviously he presented some very good ideas that were made into some great ideas. So he at least planted some effective seeds. And I always appreciated the fact that he tried to give everybody a purpose and a meaning and a character when they were on television. You see that so often now with wrestling, regardless of the company, so many guys are just there. Vince tried to give everybody a purpose, even if a lot of them were shit. Even if a lot of the gimmicks, the characters uh, were shit, the stories were shit, he tried. He tried to push some young guys too. Try to do some different things. Try to shape the creative envelope. You know, but he's also the guy that helped make WCW and in particular TNA unwatchable to me. Um, and he absolutely did. And he did a lot of bad, uh, dangerous, and disastrous things for professional wrestling too. And he's really a wrestling contradiction. Uh, so many people like to shit on him and not give him any credit at all, which is just BS. But then Vince loves to give himself way too much credit way more than he deserves, with far too little of the blame that he deserves, and that is also BS. And I mean, when we're talking about BS, 
Vince Russo lives in, owns, commands, demands, and is the king of that space. He is the lord and overseer of everything on, to borrow from Jon Stewart, Bullshit Mountain. You want to know what I'm talking about? Let's look back at some of Vince Russo's best work. And this is just some of the hits and the highlights, and there's so much more. Remember years back when DX did that whole skit where they did blackface and everything? Imagine if they did that now. Uh, where they were mocking the nation of domination. How did Vince Russo want the nation of domination, this faction of strong, powerful, successful, angry black men to get back at the nation for doing blackface and imitating them? I got it. A shoot flag football game. That ought to get it done. A shoot flag football game for The Rock and Ron Simmons. That was the idea. The same guy that had a hard on for and was giggly tits for Tank fucking Abbott, a horrible UFC fighter. He wanted to push him to the moon. He wanted to make him WCW World Heavyweight Champion. He wanted to make him a top guy. Need I say any more? No, but I'll continue. Remember the lockbox challenge where you got a strip tease out of fucking Daphne? All the pole matches that came to be because of Vince Russo. Viagra on a pole match. Need I say more? The electrified cage match. But let's go on and on. <laughs> oh, my God. Vince Russo is WCW champion. David Arquette is WCW champion. The reverse battle royal because, oh, that's a good one. His massive heart on he's had for 20-plus fucking years for that Memphis mid-card piece of crap. Just fucking Jarrett. And, of course, the brawl for all. Nothing says genius in professional wrestling like taking something where you pretend to hurt each other, but you really don't, and you try to make a lot of money off of doing it, to where you put people in shoot situations where they're legitimately supposed to hurt themselves and each other for not nearly as much money. Because that's exactly what you want professional wrestling to be. Well, that's frankly what professional wrestling has kind of become. Vince Russo was a visionary in that sense. Most of these independents, most of the wrestling companies now, it's like a fucking brawl for all. We legit shoot hurt each other and ourselves for less money than if we pretended to hurt each other and entertain the fans. I'm just saying. And Vince Russo is another one of those guys that loves to use the term Mark as an insult towards others to demean, degrade, and belittle others. And I think even in his podcast or one of the segments of his podcast, he talks about castrating the Marks. Well, if that's the case... If you're into self-mutilation, Vince, then more power to you. Because when you think about Marx, it doesn't get much bigger than Vince fucking Russo. If you're going to be castrating anybody, I hope you're castrating yourself first. Because let's look at some of the measurements for what makes a wrestling mark. Of which, by the way, I'm definitely in that category, and so are all of you. Like it or not. Marks do podcast. YouTube videos about wrestling. Vince Russo does both. He even calls his shit the Russo brand. Oh, my fucking God. He's a brand now. <laughs> He's a brand, and he can't even get 50,000 fucking Twitter followers. How embarrassing. This is a guy that had national television exposure for, for years. One of the more recognizable names for the people in the know in terms of fans on the Internet. And <laughs> he can't get half the viewers of somebody like a Grimm's Toy or a show or a J.D. from New York or a Joe Crowley. <laughs> That's how you get into guys like Steve Larson wrestling with regret. What culture? <laughs> so he's a mark and not even a very good one. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Who's the guy that did Vince McMahon's bidding on his wrestling show? On his radio show in New York? Who's the one that got Andrezzi cut out of the mix and came with a more pro-WWF uh, type of format? Even though Russo will deny this. You know it's true. And Jesus Christ, I didn't do that, he did. On top of that, he called the show, and I kid you not, Vicious Vincent's World of Wrestling. If that doesn't scream of a dumb, unoriginal mark name for your fucking self and your stupid-ass wrestling radio show, I don't know what does. That coming from somebody who calls himself the Schleg Daddy. At least you can kind of see the Schleg Daddy. You called yourself Vicious Vincent. Unbelievable.
This sounds like the nickname somebody would give themselves when they're 12 years old wrestling in a backyard fed. The main event of tonight's show, Booger Boy versus Duty Balls, with Vicious Vincent as a special guest referee. Oh, baby, you gotta be there. We're serving tea and cookies afterwards. Who's the guy that wrote Linda McMatter, McMahon, excuse me, asking for a job, begging for a job? Who's the one that booked himself to be world champion? Who's the one that thought it was good for many years to spill all the secrets about the wrestling business on TV? Who's the one in response to Jim Cornette issuing the threat of the challenge to a fight had to sit there and script out his mock apology, which, by the way, wasn't very fucking good any damn ways. Unbelievable. But you and I, we're the marks here, right? Bullshit. The truth is, while Vince has always had an understanding that I agree with, that the in-ring action is in anything and everything, a realization that many wrestling fans, frankly, need to come to. It is one part of the picture. It is an important part. But it cannot be the be-all, end-all, and only-all. Because if it is, we get to the place where we are right now, and major wrestling isn't very fucking good. He was a part of some good stuff that, frankly, helped turn the tide for WWF and helped save the company. And no matter how much anybody ever wants to take that away from him, they cannot. And he's an easy target. Just look at him. Listen to him, bro. He is an easy target, and frankly, that sometimes affords him and gets him blame that is unmerited and he most certainly does not deserve. Uh, unfortunately for Vince Russo, though, we are honestly talking about a guy whose highlights in his wrestling career all came when I was still in damn high school, back in the late 90s. We're still hanging on to that shit almost 20 years later. Furthermore, he implemented some of the dumbest shit in the history of professional wrestling. What's going to sell the fans? I know. Let's shoot semen from a super sucker, daddy. Ooh, hello, ladies. <laughs> Facials for everybody. <laughs> Although, to be fair, if the New Day did that and did it with white women, now that's controversy. That will create cash. See, I even plugged Garrett Bischoff into all this shit. But when I look at Vince Russo, I see, just like Jim Cornette, an insecure man seeking acceptance who so often is delusional about his wrestling reality and is always making excuses, never willing to take blame or responsibility for anything that he was involved in. Another dude in his 50s who is trying to live off of the past, living off of shit that happened two decades ago during the Clinton administration when I was still in high school. It's not about what we're doing in 2017. Let's talk about the shit we did in 1997. And furthermore, we talk about Marx and all this other shit. The simple truth of the matter is, Vince Russo has helped make as many stars in the wrestling business as I fucking have in the last 10 years. The answer to that, of course, is fucking zero. Zero. He's overrated in his own goddamn mind. He's a moron in general and just says some of the stupidest, most idiotic shit anybody could imagine. Oh, but, 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 we got to be nice to him because just like Ray Lewis, he found the Lord. Oh, praise the Lord. He's born again. Hallelujah and amen. Subscribe to the brand, bitches, because that's what God would want you to do. Give me a break. I, I can't even tell at this point who's more pathetic. Jim Cornette or Vince Russo? And the truth is, they're more similar than you might think. And I'll be back to explain what I mean after this. Who wants to roll with the lonely wrestling fan? I had a sudden bout of diarrhea this morning, and, and it really, truly inspired me to write this song. Now, please, please, hold your applause until the end of the song. Are we ready? The IWC is just trash. Hardcore nerds are all to blame. Your love of midgets and spot monkeys has made wrestling freaking lame. It has. Two guys in their 50s 
crying like a butt hurt mark. Mm -hmm. These clowns are so stupid. With no bite and all bark. <laughs> These egomaniacs holding on. Their glory days long since gone. Newsflash, you both suck. Every night and every dawn. Oh, sing it with me. Cornette is an angry man. Cussing all night and day. Wanting to pay and fight. Why won't he just go away? I don't know, seriously, just go away. Russo is a sleazy dude. Lying when he ever he can. Use car salesman. Even his best wasn't great. Out of wrestling his ass should be ran. Uh-huh. They just don't have a clue. Their idea is a disaster, man. What the YWC really needs is the lonely wrestling fan. You know what this whole shit between Jim Cornette and Vince Russo feels like? Follow me for a second. It feels like an old school shitty TNA storyline where you've got two guys who aren't nearly as big as they think they are, namely fucking the Memphis mid-card piece of crap founder Jeff fucking Jarrett and anybody he was booked with. You got two guys that are getting pushed like this storyline will be a game changer. See Main Event Mafia, Mortal Fortune, Aces and Eights, and of course it's not true. Getting pushed because they were once involved with WWE. Getting pushed based off of stuff that happened in WWE. Arguing about shit that happened in another company, WWE, 10, 15, and in this case, 20 damn years ago. Focusing on the wrong people and the wrong things and ultimately accomplishes nothing and nobody gets the fuck over. Does that sound familiar to you? Because it sure as hell sounds like TNA for about 13 damn years from its founding until about 2015 to me. You want to know the real truth, though, about Jim Cornette and Vince Russo? People will sit there and say that they're oil and water and they don't mix, and that's probably true. But in their differences come their similarities. And when I look at them, they really are, to me, wrestling's version of Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump, with Cornette being the Democrat being Hillary, how appropriate on many levels, and Vince Russo being the Donald Trump figure, a Republican, on so many different levels. But when you break this down, think about this. Both of them tend to favor one philosophy over the other, which both of them clearly have a distinct philosophical wrestling difference. They tend to dismiss and mock the philosophy of the other side, and we know this to be true, just like you would with Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump, Democrats and Republicans. They call each other names, that apply to themselves too. Like both Republicans and Democrats try to sit there and call each other sellouts for big corporations and this big and this lobby and that lobby and they all do this shit. Hopefully nobody's stupid enough to be sucked into that shit because it really doesn't matter. They complain about the names they're called but they do it themselves. Like Liberals will call conservatives racist and hate mongers and fear mongers and this and that, and they do the same damn thing. And conservatives will love to call liberals, uh, you know, freaking, what do they want to call them, snowflakes? But wait until something bad happens to a conservative and see how bad they cry and bitch and whine and moan about it. It's the truth for both sides. Both sides want credit for shit they actually didn't do. Then they want to take zero blame for the shit that they did do, and when it is something that they did do, they've always got an excuse to where they ultimately blame the other side and it's all their fault. If this doesn't sound like Democrats and Republicans, and if this doesn't sound like Jim Cornette and Vince Russo, I don't know what the fuck does. And ultimately, no matter what, when all is said and done, all the excuses and all the bullshit, these two guys take completely divergent paths but aren't as divergent as you might think. They really won't run parallel to each other until they eventually merge and you end up at the same shitty result and destination.
It is the political climate of the United States, no matter what anybody says. And frankly, it is the reality of Jim Cornette and Vince Russo. It doesn't matter if you agree with him or him, because they ultimately both will take professional wrestling down the course of disaster. And it's that simple. And while some of you may prefer one guy over the other, and that's probably true, the real truth is they both suck. Like if you're sitting there talking about resistance and talking about, well, Donald Trump's not my president, ding dong, dumb Dixie is whether you like it or not. And your candidate was stupid. And your candidate didn't get elected because your candidate was fucking stupid and ran a horrible campaign. And if you're somebody on the Trump side talking about how bad and evil and corrupt Hillary was, give me a fucking break. At least own what your dude was because you ultimately won. That simple. But they both suck. And you think about it even more, just like with Trump and with Clinton. You look at Cornette and Russo. Are these two supposed to be the representation of two of the best options that we have in terms of opinions and voices, in terms of credible wrestling thought? If these are the best options that we have, then what in the blue is the blue fucks does that say about us? Ding dong, dumb dicks, it ain't good. Two guys with overinflated uh, self-worths and self-importance and egos, frankly, far less important in the grand scheme of professional wrestling than they believe, and frankly, a lot of their fans and supporters believe. Not nearly as good as they make themselves out to be. And frankly, both of them, through a variety of different factors and means and ways of doing it, have helped contribute to the shit pile it is major American professional wrestling today. So instead of being on Team Cornette or Team Russo, how about saying to both of you, thank you, fuck you, bye! That's what they deserve. Who would win in a fight? Nobody. Everybody looks like a jackass. Should this fight happen? Fuck no. And Jim Cornette, I'm serious. I've issued you a challenge that should still help you feel good. I'll even put on some Vince Russo gear, the Giants jersey, the fucking cross, and I'll say, oh, sweet Jesus, hallelujah, praise the Lord, I'm born again. And that'll make you feel better. And I'll save you some money in the process and we can actually do some good for a local animal shelter. Kick me in the schleggies, I don't care. Afterwards, let's go have some steak at Roos Chris. Then bitch slap the fuck out of me. Hit me with the tennis racket. Who gives a shit? I'm serious, Cornette. I'm here in Richmond, Virginia. Let me know the dates you're available. I'll tell you the time, the place, and the destination. Let's make this happen, baby. But it's just sad. It's sad that two men in their 50s are still going at it all these years later. It's like you've gotten to the point now where you get so caught up in the bullshit. We don't even know what they're arguing about, what they're mad about anymore. And furthermore, who gives a shit? I tell you what you should give a shit about, though, is that these two guys represent what professional wrestling once was and what it could be, but not any part of what professional wrestling needs to be going forward. And they most certainly are not going to do anything to help us in our quest in 2017 to hashtag make wrestling fun again. Well, that's it for this week's episode. I hope all of you enjoyed this. Jim Cornette, I hope you're watching. Get your tennis racket and your steel toe boots ready, baby. Let's kick me in the schleggies and let's make some good things happen, damn it. But this is the Schleg Daddy for the Off the Rope Show here on OTRS Central. And since 2010, still holds true, we've been entertaining ourselves while you watch.